Hello and welcome to this mini dose about the limping child. Now there are many reasons why a child might present with a limp and we often find it easier in practice to separate the causes based largely on age and there's far too many to go through so I'm just going to pick some of the key diseases and highlight those. So the first key diagnosis we're going to look at is septic arthritis which can present in any age and here we have infection of the of the joint and particularly the synovial fluid. This will give pain and decreased movement in the affected joint. There might be an inability or reluctance to weight bear if a lower limb joint is involved, and this can be a subtle sign in young children that there's pathology. As the infection worsens, you're likely to get a fever, and patients may become systemically unwell. Erythema of the joint is possible, although less common in, in deeper joints such as the hip. In terms of investigations, if you're suspecting a septic arthritis, have a low threshold to involve the orthopaedic team early. Bloods are gonna be helpful, looking for your inflammatory markers and remembering to take blood cultures. Sometimes x-rays are requested, but their use is limited. They're not looking for septic arthritis, they're looking for other things. A lot of these children are going to require an aspiration of the joint and an extensive washout, followed by a prolonged course of antibiotics. Moving on to transient synovitis, otherwise known as an irritable hip. This is a really common condition that we see in younger children particularly, where there's inflammation in the hip. It often follows a a viral infection and is largely self-limiting. It commonly presents with pain in the hip, a decreased range of movement and a reluctance to weight bear. One of the key differentials is septic arthritis, so we might end up doing some blood tests. Ultrasound and x-rays may be considered as well, but they're often looking for other diagnoses rather than irritable hip. And we manage these patients with a good safety net and simple analgesia. Next, we're going to talk about developmental dysplasia of the hip, which occurs when you have abnormal development of either the acetabulum or the, or the head of the femur. When you're doing a newborn baby check, we assess for any early evidence of this with the Barlow and Ortolani tests. But if it's not picked up at that age, once children start to learn to walk, they might develop a bit of a limp or look a little bit lopsided when they're walking. If the child's under four months, we're going to do an ultrasound. And if they're over four months, we're going to do an x-ray. Now, management is essentially with immobilization, either using a harness or plaster of Paris. And if these non-operative interventions are unsuccessful, then we may need to progress to surgical repair. Moving on to Perthes disease, or sometimes known as leg calf Perth disease. The underlying pathology here is where you get avascular necrosis of the femoral head. We're not entirely sure why that happens, but you certainly lose blood supply. It's a condition predominantly seen in boys, sort of late preschool, early primary school age. Presentation is more of a gradual onset of often a painless limp, although you can develop some joint stiffness and therefore some joint pains later. X-rays can be useful and can raise our suspicion of the diagnosis, but an MRI is gold standard. Once diagnosed, it's important to avoid activities that are going to make this worse. Lots of children are non-weight bearing and have quite extensive physiotherapy. If those are unsuccessful, then we're going to require operative management. Finally, we're going to talk about a slipped up ephemeral epithesis, which occurs when the metaphysis of the proximal femur slips, and this will result in hip pain and a limp. Now, key risk factors include being male, high body weight, and we often see it in puberty during rapid growth spurts. This diagnosis is predominantly made via x-ray, and all Sufis are going to go and require operative management, operative fixation. So just to summarise then, we can use the age of the child to help differentiate the likely causes of a limp, make sure that we're assessing these children appropriately with a thorough history, thorough examination. Be aware that pain may be referred from different areas, particularly the abdomen, spine and genitals, and have a low suspicion for septic arthritis, particularly if you have a fever in a child with a limp.